Woodlands Way, South Australia, Adelaide. This is an absolutely horrible climb. Uh, it's got six main kickers, averages 10%, two and a half kilometers. We've got Louis here with us. First, first proper time up Woodlands Way for both of us. It was absolutely brutal. How do you find it? Well, I didn't kill myself up it like you did, but I impressed myself with my numbers and I'm definitely going to give it another go before I leave. So yeah, we're just going up here. What's a bit low? Try to hold 360 for the thing. Like My gears were fucking around and all sorts of stuff was going wrong, so it wasn't great at the beginning. And I was like, all right, it's getting steep, a little bit steep here, but you, was, you can see we're getting a bit of speed up. The top tip is just descend the hill, then turn left. You shave off probably five seconds. And hey, Louis on the right thinks he's an absolute gun, thinks he's Damo House and going to hold like 6.6 .6 watts per kilo for the climb. So he comes up on the right-hand side and absolutely lights it up. I'm 60 kilos, I'm doing 440, he's 65, <laughs> so he's doing maybe 500. I hold, Louis, what I was held coming about your mind, 500 man? watts for the minute. I just felt good, so, so off I went. And as you can see, I'm making quite a lead on Charlie. I held 320 for uh, the whole event, uh, the whole what's it called climb climb uh, that's the one but you can see it's already got up to 18 percent at one point this is a steady 15 16 percent so this is the first kicker on coach house drive absolutely brutal climb in itself but it, it then launches onto woodlands way and it's just an absolutely horrible climb as you can see i'm miles ahead now uh i held 340 for 10 which is a new record for me and i was very happy with it um but as you'll see Charlie, the man the band blew himself up and i was like trying I didn't to stay. blow myself he up. was um I was trying to say steady, but you can see it drops down now. And uh, the thing that with this climb is it's punctuated by lots of kickers. So you really have to go quite hard up them and then sort of a little bit less on the flatter parts. Demonic Dan is on my wheel. He was trying to get a good time. Um, I think he got a 10.50 on the day. Uh, my time was 10.25. I'll let you in now. About a minute behind Damo Housen, who did 6.6 .6 watts per kilo for the nine minute effort. So you can see I've got a long way to go before I'm world tour. <laughs> a good minute or so. But anyway, it's about six watts per kilo for 10 minutes. I was pretty gassed with that. All right, so here's Louis. What do you think of our first bit? It's pretty beautiful. It is beautiful. The last kicker, not so much. You want to die. I have a 36-32 on the back, and I was not spinning. It was very painful indeed. And as you see, as Charlie passes me, I get a view of the whole... I get a cinematic field of view of Dan suffering, of Charlie suffering, of Charlie, like, losing it at 55 cadence. Like almost zigzagging across the yeah, road. Yeah, I had a thirty six twenty eight on today. It was it was it was a uh, grinding for the win, as you could say. And anyway, we absolutely cut this corner, almost get run over by a car. Not to be recommended, but you know you got to do what you got to do. Um, and it's still like nine percent. This is the thing with this climb is like you're like oh it's only nine percent. We're going like twenty k's an hour. I think it's probably a little bit less than that. But even so, it's an absolutely nuts climb. Um, it's just so brutal and so horrible. Uh, everyone who ever does it's like I never ever want to do an effort again. So if if Anthony does beat my time or someone else does. Then, you mean you have the same time? So yeah, we have the same have time. So, no, but if he beats me by like a second or something, then I'll, I'll have to go back and try and get it back. But has Reeskillet? Reeskillet hasn't done it. The... He hasn't done it yet. Um, will he beat Damien House? And that's the question. There's a lot of good Strava competition happening recently. A lot of people are more interested in the segments, which is good fun. Tim Hedgebot, Hedgebot, if you're listening, give it a go. Uh, <laughs> you haven't got, done a good time yet, mate. So I'd be up for that. There's some suspect characters in the top ten who could definitely get get a beating and get a flogging. Well, I'm fifth, so I'm doing all right. Uh, yeah, on the first bit, but for the whole thing, it's pretty horrible. So you can see we're going up a 12% gradient, 380 watts. Whoops. It was absolutely horrible. I, I think I held like 370 for the first five and then just from, probably collapsed on the last yeah, wall. Prince, uh, Prince Charles is really giving a good willy here. Yeah, I've got a new nickname with, from the lads, which is pretty funny. But anyway, so heart rate's already up to 190, absolutely brutal climb. Uh, it's just like you, there's not really much to say on this climb apart from it's absolutely horrible. I Give it a go. 166, so I don't know what Charlie was doing to himself there. Yeah, we were absolutely dying. You see the cadence is. I averaged like 75, which is pretty high to be honest for such a steep climb. But you can see here again, it's like 7% and the watts are really dropping. But you just got to remember that on the kickers, you really like launch it up to 400 without even trying. Um, and then you're like, oh shit, it's, it's like 400 watts, this really hurts. Um, but yeah, I was uh, the wind, not the best wind, not great. Like here, we had a bit of crosswind, headwind. We had a bit of tailwind up coach, that was definitely good. That, you could definitely feel that. But apart from that, it wasn't absolutely ideal wind. Uh, I've heard some other people on the, on the list have had some very good wins, which definitely would help on um, this bit because it's pretty straight. So if you had a good tailwind, uh, you've got a bit of cars overtaking us, which is always good because that does increase your speed a little bit because they push the wind forward. But it's not um I was still not about, crazy. I was about 15, 20 meters behind at this point. Uh, and as it gets steeper, Charlie just drags away. Yeah, I think Dan got dropped around this point, maybe a little bit Dan, later. Dan, slowly, his weight really did hold him back. Like he was dropping. 
but you know that's what happens. When but I think yeah, he, he I mean climbs incredibly well for such a big lad, um, and I think on his day he definitely could have held, held my wheel on this climb. I think it just some people feel better on different days or whatever. I've done a bit of a warm up, maybe Dan hasn't warmed up enough. I don't know. We'll see. He he's got he lives here, so he's got some more time to do it. So how like, you did F flips before this? Like, well, they weren't too hard to be honest, because my FTP is a bit lower than what it should be. So I was I was doing like three times twelve at three hundred watts, and then did like a little bit of um a kit like a sprint before and after, which is good. Uh, like 400 watts but anyway that's what it was it was quite a nice warm up pa painful but not crazy and then this is really when I was just put got the tunes on and just absolutely killed myself uh, I found like recently I've been really good at just suffering super hard this guy this is almost a downhill it seems like but it's actually not it's still like 7% this guy knew Demonic Dan was like laughing or whatever at him because we were just absolutely crying but this literally looks downhill but it's still 6% just because it's the rest of it is so outrageously steep and this is really where you're trying to re recover, but you just can't. You've got to keep pushing on. Road surfaces, it was good at the beginning, and then it gets a bit shocking. Um, here, it's like pretty uncomfortable, to be honest. Not quite the gravel climbs we've been up. Yeah, it's not Wild Heath. Um, that's a world-class climb. Hardest climb in Adelaide. got some outrageous potholes on it. But you can see, see nonetheless, this great, the grain just kicks up on, up to like 18 to 20% on all these kickers, and it's just absolutely brutal. And the last one is the worst. So we, I think we've got one more kicker to go. Um, I think this is when Dan says cheerio, because he is too tired. To continue, but you can see the cadence is down to sixty, which is horrible. I've got some wolf tooth, so I'm literally playing with them now. I should have fucking, I should have fitted them because I could have had then had a thirty six, thirty two, which would have helped so much on this last part. You can see we're getting up to like four fifty watts, <laughs> which is not sustainable. But sometimes you just sort of you don't have a choice; you just got to do it to like keep moving. Uh, and then the last part of this climb is actually tends ends up being like eight percent or whatever. But yeah, it's an, an absolute brute. Uh, if you're going to do an effort, I'd say just like ride the climb first because otherwise you're just going to have no idea how hard it is. Uh, and just put the easiest gearing you can possibly put on it because you'll want that at the end and you'll just be crying otherwise. Like, I was really crying. And on these flat parts, I generally find just try and keep similar cadence, like click up the gears a little bit and just make, like get out of the saddle maybe a bit. You can see we're going up to 20 gears an hour, which is pretty fast for this climb. Uh, and the watts are dropping a little bit. Uh, I really suffered at the end just because I went out a bit too hard. I had like 380 for the first like three, four minutes and that was just not a good... That was a bad move, but I just like, I, I sort of recognized that and was like, all right, I'm just gonna tone it down a little bit and then just try and sort of gradually get it down to 360, which is what I, I held 355, I think, for the, for the whole effort. So just trying to gradually get it down. This well, road now kicks up ridiculously. So you see it and it's literally a wall elevating itself into the sky and I was crying and well, with laughter. It doesn't even look that saw. bad, like here, it's just when you start climbing it, you're just like, oh my God, this is horrible. So you can already see it's 18%. It hasn't even got nowhere near its like peak. Like it was eight Ks an hour, 320 watts, like 55 Ks. This is when I just cried. I lost so much time on this. I think I lost 10 seconds to Anthony or something just on this wall because I was just dead. Like the watts are now like 320 or something. <laughs> oh, this is so painful to watch. Look, I'm literally like zigzagging across the road. Like, if you've ever tried to do like 360 watts of 55 cadence, you'll just realize that it's absolutely unsustainable and just horrible for your legs. Unless your threshold's like 700 or something. <laughs> like, it's actually just disgusting. So it's still 18%, and at this point, Dan is well behind. I'm, you know, sitting up back. Watching, watching yeah, this all unfold. Yeah, you didn't even do an effort, man. You were just watching like, like, this all crazy. unfold, and well, I did because I hit some good numbers. But yeah, but, but you anyway, you didn't, you didn't absolutely flog as I was. Point being, it like the road goes left, and so you can't actually see what happens, like where it disappears off to. So I'm just thinking, shit, there is so much to go, and I'm like, Dying. 19, 20 percent. Here we go. This is the bit where 21 is going to keep going up. 49 cadence at 20 percent. If you want to have a 39, 28, you better be as fit as Damon Housen doing 6.6 .6 watts per kilo up here. And even his cadence got down to 55, which is not far from optimal. And it's just absolutely brutal. Thankfully for Charlie, it flattens out soon enough. And, well, it doesn't flatten out, but flattens out in comparison to 18%. Yeah, this, once you got to this bit, once you got round that corner, it's all plain sailing. It's all below pretty much 10%. I don't know why it says it's still 13. It's going to drop down below 10%. It still really hurts, but... You and get then around this flat. Um, you get up to 10% and then you can really just sprint. It, like, if you're feeling good, this is when you sprint. I remember looking at the time and I was like, oh, I did some bad maths because my brain was completely melted. I was like, there's no way I can be Anthony's time or like get close to it. I was like, oh, I might just get 10.29 maybe, which is Harley's time. Um, but anyway, luckily we managed to beat Harley, which is quite funny, and get the same time as um, Anthony, uh, which is good. Uh, but anyway, yeah, now it's really starting to chill out. It's like half the gradient it was, which is still like 10%, but anyway... 
and now I'm just really trying to push. Just ignore the pain and think you just want to execute what you set out to do, which is to hold 350 to 360 watts for 10 minutes and beat a time of 10.25. And uh, looks like we're going to do that now. Like, Louis, how do you find this last bar? It's actually quite chilled out because we had a bit of a tailwind. I, I really took it chilled out. I, as you said, didn't do an effort at this point. Uh, and I was running along at 200 watts, so I was having a merry time whilst but Charlie was absolutely dying at 197 <laughs> watts. He's really no, scrounging beats per here. minute, mate, not watts. 197 beats per minute, rather. Yeah, but he was really scrounging there, sub 300. But now he, you know, kicks it up. He sees the end in sight, and he really does go for it. Look, he's settling to 430, and round he goes to the corner to We're finish the segment. as hard as possible. And the segment actually ends up there on the right, but if you take a cheeky left-hander, it still counts you. So we did it for a 10.25, absolutely incredible. It was one of the most painful things I've ever done in my life. I generally Would honest, you say that's the worst you so far? Uh, no, Wild Heat is the worst because mentally you have to think about challenging. But, okay, but in, in terms, terms of, of paved pain. Clive, that was generally the worst paved Clive I think I've ever done. Right, so um, I'm going to have to give it another And thing. like, my heart rate, I just literally on this descent, I just felt so bad. I genuinely thought I was going to crash or something. We are like 60 k's now, my brain literally could not function. It was that horrible. Um, but anyway, so if I want to be world tour, I've got, to, I've got to, well, first learn how to climb like Damon Housen, and then uh, second, we've got to like learn how to ride in the bunch. Uh, I'm not sure that's going to happen, but we'll see. But yeah, it's a solid effort. It's quite nice that Damon Housen actually did a proper effort on this, and we can see how far away the poor amateurs are. Like, there are a lot of amateurs, 10.25, 10.29, 10.30, and then there's Damon Housen out front and 9.08. Will that change with Reese Gillett? Can Reese Gillett beat uh, Damon Housen? That is the, that is the question everyone will be asking. But um, anyway, we'll, we'll see you in the next video, which should be Coach Road, I believe, uh, or, Cherry, or maybe Cherryville again. Uh, we're doing an effort I thought we'd do Sunnyside. Nah, Sunnyside's for, it's not very popular. So it's going to be Coach Road or... Maybe Coach Road or Cherryville we'll have. Um, oh, um, God. Well, hopefully we'll have some big names doing that. So anyway, yeah, cheers for watching. Uh, have you done Woodlands Way? It's an absolutely horrible climb. Leave your comments about Woodlands Way uh, in the description below, uh, in the comment section below. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.